okay the square root kind of vanishes so this is going to be 3 minus 1 so 4 radical 3 minus 4 divided by 2 Okay. And if you want, you can do one more step. What is four radical three divided by two? That's two radical three and minus four divided by two, which is two. You can do this if you want. Okay, I want you guys to go through the three examples one more time. Okay, are you going over the examples? The main thing that you learned is you cannot have a square root in the denominator or a cube root or a fourth root. You cannot have this in the denominator. So you're going to do things like this. It's called rationalizing the denominator. If it is a square root, it's very easy. Just take the whole thing and multiply the top and bottom by the same exact same thing. But if it's a cube root, you're going to look for how can you get the next perfect square from four, perfect cube from four. You know that eight is a perfect cube and all you have to do is multiply the four by cube root of two. So four and two becomes eight and cube root of eight is two. Okay. And the last example, if you have sum of radicals, you're going to multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate and then do the problem. Okay. I feel like that was not enough example for you to try the homework confidently. So let's try something else. I'm going to give you similar ones. It's not in my notes, but let me see. Okay, let's try this. Mm. Okay, try this one more. Okay, you can say D. Continuation of that. 5 divided by cube root of 32. Your goal is to eliminate this cube root in the denominator. This is cube root.
that okay so what do you have to do 32 is not a perfect cube is there any way we can get the 32 into a perfect cube can you tell me the perfect cube right before 32 the perfect cubes are one what is the next perfect cube eight, eight. Mm -hmm. what's the next one it's three times three times 27 and the next is the four times four times four what is four times four times four 64 okay. this example you see that this 32 is in between 27 and 64. Your 32 is between 27 and 64. Correct? Which means, is there any way you can make the 32 a 64? What do you have to do? Multiply 32 by something to get 64. By two. By two. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to, but simply, you cannot simply divide it by two. It's going to be cube root of two because then only you can combine this cube root of 32 and this cube root of two. So you have to make sure that it's not simply two, it's cube root of two. Okay. So you're going to multiply the top and bottom by cube root of two. So the numerator is five times cube root of two. Denominator is cube root of, what is 32 times two again? You know now it's 64. 64. Correct. So five times cube root of two divided by cube root of four. Now you know it is four. See how you got rid of the 32? The radical is gone. There is no more radical in the middle now. Just a four. Okay, next question is one more. Let's try one more. Four divided by square root of radical three. Four divided by square root of radical three. Okay. As I told you, if it's simply a square root in the thing, it's very easy. All you have to do is take the same thing and multiply the top and bottom by that. The square root getting rid is very easy. Get Take the whole same thing and multiply the top and bottom by that. And in the numerator, we have four and radical three. You cannot take the four inside the square root because four is without the radical. But square root of three times square root of three is square root of nine. What is square root of nine? Three. Three. So that is how you get rid of the square root. Because in the denominator, we get a square root of three squared and that's nothing but just three. Do you understand now? If it is just the square root, you don't have to think too much. Just take the same thing and multiply the top and bottom by that. When you do that, you don't even have to do this step. You know that when you get the square of the radical, the radical just vanishes and you just get the three. Okay? Okay. Now, let's do this. Now, how do you perform operations with radicals? Okay. Read the first part. Just read it.
Okay. Do you understand what light radicals are? Okay. There are two things. One is they should have the same index and same radicand. Index is the, the number that stays inside the bucket looking thing, like the cube root, then it's three. If it's fourth root, it's four and so on. Those are the index. Radicand is the thing inside the radical, radicand. So in this case, this is going to be 15 is the radicand. And the index is two because for square root, we normally don't write the two in the bucket. So it's just square root. From anything other than two, we always write the number there and that's the index. Okay, so let's try this. Adding and subtracting radicals. It's exactly the same way as you combine like terms. No change. You just have to make sure that they are like radicals. Like radicals are the one that have the same index and same radicand. As long as they are like radicals, you can add them, subtract them, and do all those kind of things. When you are multiplying radicals, it's simply distributing them and simplifying them. Okay? Combining, adding, and subtracting is a bit harder than just multiplying because multiplying is just distributing and simplifying. But adding and subtracting radicals, you have to make sure that they can be combined. Um, you have to check if they are like radicals or not. Okay, is it clear to you guys what a like radical, what like radicals are? Yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's try example A. We have three times radical 15, then two times radical 13, minus seven times radical 15. Okay, so there's a plus sign between the first two, and there's a minus sign between the second and the third one. Okay, now my question, watch this laser. Can you combine the first two terms? Can you combine them? No. No. Why? Because radical 15 and radical 13 are not like radicals. Can you tell me why they are not radicals? They don't have the same index or radicand. They have the same index because they both are square root, right, Ritika? But the index here is two because it's square root, not this three. Three is not the index. Right. So they have the same index, but do they have the same radicand? No. That is why they are not like terms. There is a minus seven radical 15. So do you guys see any like terms in this problem? Yeah. Yes, I'm gonna underline the like terms or circle. You always take the sign in front of it. Okay, now we are going to combine. What is, I'm gonna show right here. What is three radical 15 minus seven radical 15? What is that? You just do the three minus seven. What is three minus seven? Negative four. Negative four. And then you keep the radical thing exactly. It's like 3x minus 4x. What is 3x minus, uh, sorry, 7x? It's minus 4x, correct? Hello? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so the thing, thing is the radical 15. So that just stays the same. You don't do anything with the x. You just attach the x to it. So similarly, you just the radical 15 to it. You just subtract the three and minus seven, and that's how you get negative four radical 15. And then there is a two radical 13 standing all by itself, cannot be combined with anything. It is okay. Just keep it like that. That's, and the, answer. that's the answer, yes. You can combine the radical 15 and radical 13 because they're not like radicals. Okay, let's take care of B now. First, five radical seven. Second term is square root of 63. If you just look at them, 
we see that they are actually not like terms. This is seven. They have the same index, but they don't have the same radicand. So you cannot combine. But six to three looks like L not simplified because it's not that small of a number, right? So you may want to do the factor three for 63 and see what are the factors. Maybe we can pull something out and then make it look like radical seven. So go ahead, the least, the smallest factor is three. 63 is. Sixty-three divided by three is twenty-one. One. Okay, and then uh, you can do it further. Three times seven. Can you do the factor three further? No. Right. Okay. So we are done with the factor three. So I'm just going to write this thing because you can simplify it. But 63 looks like three times three times seven. And there you go, there is a factor pair. So this is five times square root of seven plus, when you have a factor pair, what, what happened to it? You take it out or you take one of them out. Very good, so you have three radical seven. Now look at them. Are they like radicals? Yes. Are they like radicals? Yes. Yes. In this wasn't right. Okay. So uh, initially, it did not look like like radicals at all. So you feel like, hey, I can combine and move on will be wrong. Right, you'll be wrong. You see that 63 cannot be combined. That's what you think, but 63 may be a little too long, big number, which you can do it in your head if you're not familiar with all the perfect squares and everything. But anyway, after doing the factor tree, you realize that they are actually like terms, and it's eight radical seven, five and three, and add eight radical seven. Good, okay, uh, we'll do one more and then we'll come back, um, Monday we'll do D and some other warm-up problems. Look at C, first you have to check whether they are like radicals. Are yeah, they're like. They're like because they have watched the laser, they have the same index three and three, they have the same radicand two x and two x, so they are like radicals. So in that case, you just add the coefficients. Four plus five is nine. Cube root of two x. Nine cube root of two x. All right. Yeah. So I think we'll stop here today. Uh, tonight's homework is going to be a little bit of chapter eight review. Ellison, I'm thinking about a chapter eight test, but it's going to be online though. So wait for some school loop um, email. I'll tell you guys the details about that, okay? Okay. Because uh, it is important that you, so, yeah. and uh, you feel like you, probably don't feel like doing much now, but I, I really appreciate the 11 kids who are actually coming in for class regularly. It's good for you. The other 20 kids are actually missing out a lot. I don't know what they're going to do next year in their geometry class. Okay, just um, keep coming. So I'm gonna give a test. Um, just look for school local now, okay? But that will be from chapter eight. We'll keep reviewing in class also. We have spent so much time for chapter eight. Um, so let's just see how that actually you guys learned or not. Okay. All right, guys. So, um, we are ending today and then 
You guys have a great weekend. I'll see you guys Monday around 11.45. Bye. 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 Have a good day. Oh, thank you.